All right, what is pictured here again is another Arduino project. This is an Arduino uh, Nano. This is my rotary encoder board that we that you should have saw the schematic for it, or I'll show it to you again and explain how it works. What a rotary encoder is, it's one of the, it's a very it's another variation of this inexpensive device. If you turn the shaft, it produces two output signals, and the phase relationship in those two output signals tells you the direction. And it also will enable you to count how many turns indentation per 360 degrees. So let me demonstrate over here. I will rotate the encoder and you notice the count on the LCD display. If I go counterclockwise, it goes down. Go clockwise, it goes up. I can go all the way to zero. This thing will count up uh, very large numbers. Let me zoom in on the display again and let you see it a little closer. Clockwise, counterclockwise. Let's zoom up to the top of the board. You may have saw two little LEDs blinking. Let's zoom in those a bit. The LED on the right is your um, count pulse. The LED on the left is your direction. So if I'm turning counterclockwise, the direction LED is on high, and you can see the count pulses if I go clockwise the L the direction LED goes off and every count I go through you can see a flash on the LED and of course it changes the count on the uh, that is uh, detected by Arduino and displayed on the LCD display now the circuit here is nice because these little type sensors here while they are cheap, they are sort of, they sort of have a lot of contact noise. And the idea with the board here, if you want to zoom in just a little bit closer on it, uses a CD4013 dual D flip-flop and a 7414 Smith trigger input NAND gates. I only use half of each chip. So I could actually, with the electronics in those two chips, I could have put in two complete encoder circuits. Nonetheless, one of them is for this demo. I'm going to pull the power, disconnect the board, and let you look at it a little closer. there's the board it was made if you notice the edge the pins on the edges these were designed to plug into a proto board all right let's move on from the video here and we'll see how the programming works in this case I'm using interrupts again like I do on a lot of these projects, they work very good for detecting uh, switch closures, or in the case of this, a um, rotary encoder, which could be attached to a manual shaft, or it could be attached to a motor. Anyway, let's look at the uh, how the circuit works a little closer. On to the next part. Welcome. The subject of this video is, I'm going to be looking at a rotary encoder circuit that I built that will not only produce a step pulse output but will also tell you the direction and it will be connected to an Arduino in this case it can be used in other microcontrollers as well what is a rotary encoder it's basically let's refer to the diagram up here internally you see this is a basically three pin device with a knob shaft internally you got a ground and you have two switches 
that open and close that you see here. Now you have an output A and B and you have two 10K resistors that pulls the switch levels too high. When a switch is closed, the output's going to go low. What is important is as you turn the shaft is the phase relationship. If you're looking at A, for instance, and it's going from low to high, if you look down here at phase B, it's going to be high or low depending on the direction the shaft is turned. In this way, we can determine the direction that the shaft is turning, and in the main program, we can increment or decrement a counter. Here is our actual circuit diagram. Once again, here's our three pin rotary encoder and the pull up resistors. Now, both of the outputs are tied to a one microfarad capacitors, and they are sent through um, a 7414 Schmidt trigger inverter um, gate. High in, low out, low out, high low in, high out, so forth. These four components here are used to clean up the switching waveform, which can be noisy or bouncy contacts and other problems. So these four components serve to clean up the output signal from the encoder. Now we come to a D flip-flop. In this case, it is CD4013D flip-flop. It has an input called D for data bit. Then we have clock. When you um, turn the shaft, when this clock goes from uh, low to high, whatever value is at D appears in direction. And of course, you have the step output from the clock as well. So as you turn the shaft, again, as you turn the shaft, you're going to end up with a step pulse and a direction. This say this is much more accurate with Arduino or another microcontroller than trying to leave all this out and trying to read it directly. Saves a lot of problems, does a cleaner, better job. So let's look at this again. You turn the shaft in one direction. This is going to be, say, low on B here. And when this goes from low to high, the low is going to be clocked out here on Q. If we go in the other direction, this is going to be high. And when A goes from low to high, the output Q is going to go low. That's all there is to it. That's how the circuit works. It has, oh, six, let's see, one. These two, uh, these two 7414s are one of six and a two of six in a single package. The CD4013 has a extra D flip-flop. There's two in that package. I only used one. So you're looking at five, seven, eight parts at the most. Well, take that back. These two are the same part. Here is a picture of my actual circuit board that I constructed. Very simple circuit. Here's your CD4013 dual D flip-flop, the 7414 um, hex inverters, the two one microfarad caps, and the rotary encoder, and so forth. Let's go ahead and take a look now at the actual Arduino programming and why I did what I did. All right, just looking at it to start, here is your pin connections if you want to use the Arduino Liquid Crystal Library. Those pin connections are defined down here in the uh, Liquid Crystal Setup Statement. And there's your library. What is important is that the step output that you saw in the earlier schematic is going to go to pin 2, and direction is going to be going to pin 3. To count this, I'm going to be using uh, pin 2's interrupt, which is interrupt 0. In order to do that, I really need to set up a variable called counter. It's an integer, as you see, um, 
declared here, and I went ahead and set it to zero, but I declared it static. If I declare a variable static, it's seen across all your programs, and it's also um, set up to be in RAM. It's far more accurate to do it this way than trying to set it up in flash RAM somewhere. Let's move on down the uh, page. And there's your various setups. Here is the, uh, your attach interrupt statement down here. It's going to be interrupt zero, which is pin two. The program that the interrupt service routine, or ISR, is called read rotary and I want to read it on the falling waveform. Okay, if you remember, let's go, if you remember up earlier, we had where the waveform on A would go from low to high. Then it would uh, clock in whatever the level is to, on D to the Q output. Okay, I want this red when it's falling back to zero because that would have allowed the bit to be clocked out and waiting for me. So it's really a matter of I am I count the steps, but I'm also reading the direction off of uh, digital pin 3. The rest of this is pretty much here. If you look in loop, here's your loop statement down here. Um, there's a reason this is how you uh, output it, as you will see on the rest, the other part of the video that shows it operating as a live circuit. Why did I use delay microseconds? Very simple. Um, delay microseconds does not require the use of an interrupt that delay does. Now I could have done a delay 10 milliseconds. Instead, I use the delay microseconds because that doesn't involve the use of an interrupt. Down here, of course, is my main program right here. This is read rotary. It doesn't uh, take a value and it doesn't return anything. What it's doing is I'm checking the digital, I'm doing a digital read on direction. That's three. Okay, it's going to be in two conditions. It's going to be high or low, depending on which way I turn the shaft. If it is um, high, I believe, let's see if digital read, not, yep. If it's going to be high, I'm going to decrement the counter. If it's going to else, I'm going to increment the counter. And that's the counter that you see counting in the video. It just displays whatever it is. And up here, it's just going to keep printing counter. After every 100, uh, every 10 milliseconds or so, it's going to just keep uh, displaying the uh, count starting at zero and it's going to be plus and minus. This routine down here and the interrupt does all your work. This right here does your work. All this serves to do is just display the output. And that's how it works. That's not a lot to it. So note your important points is up here. Got to use a static variable. In this case, it was an integer counter. The interrupt routine, which is down here, which every time um, the waveform on input A on the rotary switch assembly goes from high to low, it immediately reads direction. It will increment and decrement the counter based on that interrupt every time the waveform goes from high to low. I hope that was some use to you. Thanks for watching the video.